Hello and welcome to this demonstration of pot distilling. Pot distilling is used when you want to create a distilled alcohol with flavour. It contrasts with column distillation which strips away nearly, if not all, flavour leaving only the alcohol behind. Fundamentally it is the same process as column distillation, but is less selective, thereby retaining the flavour of your initial wash. Pot distilling is a process that can be repeated a number of times, unlike column distillation. This means you can create bands of distillates that are gradually more and more refined. This is used in creation of brandy, whiskey and more. Column distillation is used more frequently for your white spirits, such as vodka or gin. Pot distilling for this reason can be both relatively straightforward, but also quite complex. Before you even begin distilling, you need to ensure that your fermentation is completely done. If your distillation has not finished, then it will create problems we'll describe later in the video. The simplest way to do this is to check the specific gravity after you believe the fermentation is completed. If it is at the same reading for three days straight, you should have achieved final fermentation. Now the problem with leaving an incomplete fermentation and then trying to distill this, especially when we're talking about a pot still, is that the sugars can create a whole bunch of complications. Primarily, frothing. Frothing then gets inside the distillation mechanism, carries through to your distillate, and contaminates it. This means that you wind up with a product that has sugars in what should be pretty much just alcohol and a few flavouring agents. If you've somehow made a mistake and put an incomplete fermentation into your still, you can do a few things to try and mitigate the damage. One of these is to use conditioner. This will help, if not necessarily stop, the frothing, especially if it's a minor issue. But the reality is, why fix a problem when you can prevent it? Your other option is to try and clear it. Now, the fermentation will begin to consolidate, in so much as the yeast, sugar, and so on will settle to the bottom of the fermenting vessel over time. You can speed this up by putting it into a fridge or cold environment for several days before you go to distill it. Again, why go to the effort of fixing it when you can prevent it? Now that you have your raw materials, so to speak, prepared, you need to look at the pot still itself. It's made up of several parts. The most important of these being the condenser arm and the copper dome. These are what significantly differentiate the pot still from a column still. You need to mount the mechanisms together. This is done by taking the copper dome, putting the condenser arm into it, tying the nut underneath along with an o-ring. These then create your distilling mechanism. Make sure it is firmly attached. You don't want any gas or vapour leaking out of it. You then need to attach a thermometer into the top of your condenser system. This is what will be reading the information you need to be aware of throughout the distillation. Understand that there are certain points that are essential to understand when you are distilling. As with a column still, Ethanol will begin to boil off around 77 degrees centigrade. This means slightly below that you'll have methanol being produced, and above 88 degrees you'll get your other alcohols, your fusel oils. You want the ethanol component in the middle there. Once you have your thermometer in there and knowing why the readings on it are going to be important, begin attaching your tubing necessary for your water cooling system to the condenser. This is connected to the thicker part of the tube. When you are setting it up, make sure you place the inlet at the part of the thicker tube that is nearest to the line arm. That is where your distillate comes out. Make sure your outlet is near to the top of the condenser arm. Check that there are no leaks by briefly turning on the water cooling system. If you are confident in your preparations, you can do this separate from the boiler and start heating the boiler and the fermentation within it. This allows you to be ready to go for the first run with the pot still. And mind that, it is the first and rough separation that you are achieving with this. It is called the stripping run, and no, it does not involve getting naked and running around. 
doing so in the distillery can lead to some serious burns. What the stripping run is, is quite easy to understand in theory. You are taking your whole solution of fermentables, that is any residual sugar, yeast, any undesirable taste products, your desirable hearts, the very bad heads, and the very undesirable tails, breaking them into their parts and producing those hearts that you really want. That is a series of samples of your distillate. Often in several litre batches, these distillates can then be broken up into smaller fractions, that is, small samples that have come out of the still at different times. They will have distinct and unique flavour profiles. What you need to keep in mind when doing this is that each distillation will remove more flavour but also increase the alcohol within your distillate. Based on your fairly standard product ratio, if you start with a 20 litre batch of fermentation and you distill it down to between 2 and 4 litres, you will have somewhere between 10 and 5 times as much alcohol in the distillate than you had in the fermentation because you've reduced the volume but you've kept the relative amount of alcohol. Remember, distillation takes up to 96% of the alcohol out of the original solution. For this stripping run, you don't need to worry about trying to collect all of the distillates in separate batches. This is because you're simply trying to reduce the total volume, but also ensuring that you've removed anything you don't want to be distilling. To do this, you need glass containers. You can use others if you want, but glass is best. An alcometer, a thermometer, and that's about it. Assuming, of course, that you have a pot still and boiler. You begin your distillation run by heating the contents of the boiler up to 55 degrees centigrade. From this point, you turn on your cooling system. This means cold water should start flowing into the condenser. Remember that with a pot still, unlike a column still, you have no way to select when the distillate will start coming out. What you do instead is simply take what comes out as it comes out. One of the reasons why with the column still you can increase the flow rate is to try and improve the separation. When we're talking about the pot still, you simply want to have a constant flow rate, somewhere between 2 and 3 litres per minute. You can recycle this water if you have an appropriate system in place to cool it down again. You need to make sure the water cools down so that what's coming out of the end of your line arm is a liquid and not a vapour. Vapour from an alcohol is incredibly volatile and one of the reasons why distilling has a bad reputation. Ignoring the fact that it has a bad reputation, it will also affect the yield of alcohol from your distillation process. In theory, at least for the stripping run, you want to get as much as you can out of your fermentation. Keep going with this until one of two or preferably both of these things occur that the distillate that you've produced is 20% ethanol by volume, and that the measure on the thermometer is 98 degrees centigrade. Going above this means you are going to pretty much only be getting water, and the yield is not worth chasing. Those two degrees until you start boiling the water simply aren't practicable. The remaining contents of the boiler can be added to yet another distillation run, or discarded, Product can be used in a variety of ways other than simply being added to the next distillation run. One of these is to use it as a fertilizer. Make sure that once you've completed this first run, you completely clean your boiler and distillation system. Make sure to rinse it thoroughly as you don't want to contaminate the next run. The next run is known as the spirit run, and this is perhaps the more important of the two, primarily because this is where you're going to get real results that you can appreciate. The first run simply gives you a concentrate. This concentrate contains all of the various alcohols and flavours which can include methanol and therefore should not be consumed, and why you need to take care with the spirit run. The spirit run is what you're going to be dividing the alcohol with. This is where we get the previously mentioned heads, hearts and tails. There are also something known as four shots. These different steps are also known as cuts. 
The cuts are between 100 and 200 milliliter samples of what is coming out of your still. Assuming you are following directly on from your first distillation run, you should have all of the same equipment on hand. This includes alchemeters, thermometers, and so on. Like with the stripping run, you can combine the product of that and then make one big spirit run, rather than running multiple small spirit runs. This can be particularly useful if you're trying to make the most of getting the most heads, hearts, and tails. You can also ensure that what you produce, as far as the four shots are concerned, is going to exclude just about all the methanol that you can. The only caveat to this is that when you are taking your samples from a larger volume, you need to be mindful that your four shots will be larger in volume as well, which means you should be removing a larger portion of four shots with a larger distillation run. Since the setup is exactly the same for a spirit run as it is for a stripping run, you can assume that everything should be exactly the same, and you can begin with the same basic processes, which is mount your pot still system, turn on your boiler, and wait for it to reach 55 degrees centigrade. From here, you should be able to produce four parts. The first of these are your four shots. If you have turned on your water system at 55 degrees centigrade, and you have a relatively constant flow rate, that is between 2 and 3 litres per minute, you should begin to see products very soon coming out of your line arm. Depending on the total volume of what you are heating up in your boiler, you should look at removing the first 200 millilitres. These are known as your four shots. Four shots are what will contain things like methanol and most of the other particularly dangerous compounds that could be generated during fermentation and then concentrated during distilling. This cannot be consumed safely, and you should discard it. For the purposes of simplifying the distillation process, we use a constant measure of either 100 or 200 milliliter cuts. Now this means that you should be taking the same amount out of your four shots no matter what, if not more, and that is 200 milliliters. Others will specify that your cuts should be of smaller quantities, that being anywhere between 50 and 250 milliliters. We try to use a constant value to simplify our process, but depending on the available containers that you have, you may need to modify this process. Going from here, you have the heads, and the heads are where you begin to get usable material. That is, what you actually want to be drinking. Now, the caveat to that is that the heads are made up of alcohols and components that come off at a much lower boiling point. This compares relatively unfavorably with ethanol, which is what you want to begin getting at in the hearts. This does not mean that they are undesirable in and of themselves, just that they are very different in their composition. So, once you start collecting, you should look at the heads as being something that will make up about a quarter to maybe a third of the total run. You should have been labeling your containers, preferably starting with one and working your way up from there. As each is filled, close them up and put them to a side. You'll find that as you keep going, you'll get to a point where your thermometer begins to read somewhere between 83 and 85 degrees centigrade. This measurement is where you go from being in the heads to the heart. The heart is the most desirable elements. Now, as mentioned, the way we work is we use a set volume no matter what part of it we are collecting, either a 100 or 200 milliliter volume, but it's a constant volume. You yourself might choose to select the hearts and distill them into a single large vessel. Either way, this is the middle part that you are really after. It's also going to have a higher alcohol by volume content reading 55% on average. Continue to collect this until the thermometer reads 90 degrees centigrade. After 90 degrees centigrade, we're not going to be collecting the hearts anymore, but instead the tails. The tails are, much like the heads, not the most desirable elements of your distillate, but you should continue to collect them in numbered vessels. You should continue to collect the tails until your thermometer reads somewhere around 98 degrees centigrade. 
This means you collect the tails somewhere between 93 degrees centigrade and up to 98 degrees centigrade. After you hit 98 degrees centigrade, you're going to be collecting parts of the tails that again aren't necessarily worth tracing. This can be added back into various stripping runs to try and improve yield once more. Once you've completed your distillation, clean up, pack away, and store everything you need. Once you've done that, you now need to look at the collection of vessels you have, preferably labelled in order. What you have are two things worth being mindful of. First, is make sure you take a measure of the temperature of each of these vessels, and use the alcohol meter to measure how much alcohol is in them. You'll now need to calculate what the actual alcohol reading is. The temperature of the contents of your vessel will actually influence the amount of alcohol that the alchemeter is reading, and this means that you need to adjust for that. And there are either plenty of calculators online, or a few examples of what you need in the description below. Second is, you have a wide collection of samples. These include the heads, the hearts, and the tails. That is, three major sections that you need to be balancing, and this is where the term blending comes in. Blending is where you take the hearts and balance it with the heads and tails. The challenge here is that not all heads and not all tails will be worth trying to blend to start with. The closer the distillate was to where the heart came out and when the heart stopped coming out is the most desirable elements of the heads and tails. Conversely, those that came out at the very start and towards the very end are least desirable. And so, Trying to find the balance between maximum yield, best flavour, and best overall balance of your effort is where you need to taste each of the samples, smell each of the samples, and then decide how much of that particular cut to add to either the hearts or to the tails, or to combine them in a different way. You'll find that the heads themselves will often have some of the more harsh flavours and also a large amount of alcohol. The tails will have a small amount of alcohol, but a lot of more balanced and nuanced flavour. This means that the 55% in your hearts is going to be the starting point, but it will either go up or down depending upon which of the ends of the spectrum you are favouring. Often you'll find that adding more of the tails is better, as it increases the flavour, and you have about 15% alcohol at a minimum to try and shift that window. This means that you can force down the alcohol concentration and improve the flavour of your distillate. This process is necessary, especially when we're talking about some of the more flavourful distillates or spirits. For example, whiskey, brandy, cognac, all of these things require blending. And to a certain extent, that's exactly what you are doing here. If you want to make your whiskey from multiple batches, you will need to consider blending anyway. But if you're doing it from a single batch, you may still want to tailor the flavour based on this distribution of elements. The contents you don't use aren't going to be wasted and can be put back into another stripping run. This does several things, one of which that it increases the concentration of desirable elements in that run, so you should get an improved yield. If you are unhappy with the general product that you've generated from this particular spirit run, you can repeat the process, but it's worth remembering that the more often you go through pot distilling, the more of the flavours you're going to remove, and the more alcohol is going to remain. This means that although you can continue to distill the products, you are going to get a diminishing return on flavour, but you should also get a greater separation between flavours. That means if there's something you really want to get out of it, you can do exactly that. This is a very broad overview of the pot distilling process, and it should give you some idea of what's happening when, why, and how. What you then need to consider is exactly what circumstances you are in when you are trying to distill your products, what you're trying to get out of it, and how you're going to achieve it based on this information. Over time, the best way to get to know pot distilling is through practice, and hopefully there's enough information here for you to do exactly that. Understand pot distilling and put it in practice. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing.
Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.